Yo, what's good YouTube? How are we all doing? Are you all doing well? And having a great weekend. I'm bringing you the, the most requested video on my stream that I'm having at the moment, and it is my updated 4231 tactic video. So for everyone who watches on stream, uh, I'll, I'll go live five to six days a week on Twitch TV, CR16, if you want to come and check the stream out. We've become a constant elite player. We just hit elite two for the first time last weekend with 25 wins and four losses as well. So, we, you know, we're getting close to that 27 wins in elite one. We're a division one player, as you can see here. I think the, the highest I've, I've, I've kind of hovered around is about 2,150, 2,200. Um, dropped down a little bit from doing kind of some of the objectives and, and so forth in, the, in the, the seasons and, you know, for the, some of the players and some of the icon swaps. But yeah, that, you guys want this video, you've been asking for it. I have been talking a lot about it on stream, but it's about time I brought it all together into one video and to go through everything in my tactics, how I play, how I use it. And also I'm going to give you tips and tricks um, in game as well. Things I do in game to further take the tactic forward rather than just instructions uh, before we start the game as well. So let's get into it. So this is the team we've been using now for the last couple of weeks on foot champs and rivals. Um, a very, very strong team. It is a road to glory as well. No FIFA points spent. So everything you see here is from grinding the game, from doing rivals, foot champs, squad battles, SBCs and things like that. So this is what you can achieve if you do put the grind in. I feel like it's a pretty pretty strong team for a road to glory. There, there is better road to glories out there and there is worse road to glories out there. But it's a, it's, a, it's a strong team. It's very well balanced. Um, a lot of good players in the right positions. So it works well. I'll jump into the custom tactics and we'll go through how I set it all up. Right, so here we go. This is the tactics for my 4231. So the first thing you're going to see there is drop back. And obviously, the first thing I know that some people play, oh, you play a drop back, or you, you know, drop back's boring and, and, and so forth, and drop back this and drop back that. But what I will say is, drop back and four depth is not really swear. You know, it, 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 you can play balanced and four depth, or drop back and four depth. And depending on how you play, it's very, very similar. I've jumped between them both. Uh, people who watch me in stream will know that I, I'm a very aggressive defender. I like to press my opponent. I like to manually defend and move my players into positions where I want them to, to and, and press and press as much as I can to make my opponent make a mistake. I'm not the kind of player who'll just sit back, let their eye defend, and you know, and, and be a drop back one depth kind of player. And, and abuse it but what I will say about drop back and it also it tells you here as well you know it, it preserves your team shape and when you lose a ball it'll put your defenders and your midfielders in the right position faster which so a bit so in the way I look at it it resets your team faster allowing you to concentrate on pressing the opponent moving the players you want to move and winning the ball back as fast as you can without worrying about is the, are the players in the right position and having to move the players into the right position earlier, which with balance sometimes you have to do. But there's not a lot between it. Drop back's not easy to use. It isn't easy to use if you manually defend. If you AI defend and wait for the opponent to make a mistake and get the ball, then it's easy to use. But if you manually defend, it's not easy to use. So there is a bit of a learning curve there. So see what works for you. Drop back or balance. Um, both are fine, but I feel like drop back just gives you that little bit of an edge, especially in foot champs as well, because you've got to remember that, that most people are using drop back. So it's something that you do want to take use of. And I might get a little bit of hate for this, for having it on the tactic, but it is what it is. And I'm, I want to tell you, what works for me and the best way to get wins and to improve your game. So I'm not going to sit here and pretend to you that I play balanced and then this is the tactic. I'm going to tell you what I use and it is what it is. The width's five, okay? And I have that so it's, it's balanced, a nice width, and I will jump into more about why I use five in game and combine with overload ball and how I use overload ball as well because that's getting a bit of bad rep at the moment as well, but I feel like it's a bit unjustified because there are ways around it, which I will talk about as well. So I stick with five, which allows me to go between the overload ball side and a slightly more balanced defensive setup in game as well. Depth forward, um, purely because I've tried three, didn't like my team being so deep. I tried five, sometimes you get caught out over the top. I just find that depth four is the perfect balance between not being too deep, 
and being boring with your play and and finding that it's really slow to build your play up and attack your opponent and it's obviously not like five or six depth where you're going to get caught behind you know and people can do free balls it's just just a nice balanced amount to use and it's what worked best for me after trialing back and forth multiple times i've gone back to this setup and um, i think this is pretty similar to what i used previously than my 4231 apart from the fact i've adopted drop back now because it works better for me with my um, pressure defensive maneuvers offensive style is balanced i've played around with with all these and um Balance is the best one by far. It allows you to choose how you want to play, how you build your play up. You can then control what play runs your players make manually a lot more as you build the play up with the right button and left button, LB, RB, and um, you know, same for PlayStation and Xbox. With six, um, I use this because it allows you to count uh, over the ball a little bit when the compressor defense and also width is very very strong at the moment with, with with allowing you to spread the play mix it up a little bit and you know create openings in the middle of the park and down the wings and allows you to express yourself a little bit more rather than being one dimensional and, and playing just through the middle or just pouring it to light you know a lot higher up and just playing the wings I find that six is an, again much like the defensive with being five, I find six works best for attacking. Um, but I know some people actually prefer it narrower, but for me personally, I prefer it a little bit wider because it works for me in my play style. Players in box, I've now gone to five. Just, again, because of the way people are attacking now. The, the, the people are obviously using drop back a lot lower depth than what we've got here and then countering a lot. So if you, if you go anything above five now, I find that it leaves you really open to being counted really fast and and getting caught out um, but I find that when it's on five you've got again a good balance between the amount of players are going to get in the box for you when you're attacking without getting caught out defensively as well and cards and free kicks always in all my tactics I've used two and two and again much like what I just said for the players in the box you don't want to get caught out on the break on a corner and you don't want to get caught out on a break on a free kick just because they're still pretty weak in game for corners you want to be playing it short nine times out of ten um and if you do lose a ball you don't want to get caught out and, and get scored on it's there's nothing worse than having a corner and then them getting the ball breaking and scoring so you know i think it leaves two to three players back for you to, to cover you cover it i think two in your own half and then one just in the middle of the park which works really well for you you know i i, I can't remember the last time i got counted on a corner having it like this but i still score plenty of corners create chances from corners with this and the same for free kicks as well so we'll jump into the formation and I'll show you the setup I use and who plays where. So here's the setup for me in game, what I switched to. So I've got Alex Tellers at left back. I've got David Luiz and Blank at centre backs. Lala at right back. Then I've got Sizoko, who's me out when out CDM. Awara is me box to box CDM. Bernardo Silva at right attacking midfield. Kevin De Bruyne at cam. Traore at lamp and Neymar at striker. So a very, very strong team, very well balanced. Um, Ideally, if I wasn't on a road to glory and I had some coins, I would, I would be replacing probably the whole Cam positions, you know, Lamb, Ram and Cam. I'd probably replace all them players and move Kevin De Bruyne into the CDM position. But unfortunately, I don't have that luxury, so I have to make do with what I've got, which is still very, very strong. Obviously, I'm not saying it isn't, but ideally, I would have different players in them positions. Right. Let's get into the instructions. Here we go. So, for Neymar... I spent a lot of time with the striker switching between different things here. I've used drift wide quite a lot um, and I've switched between target man and balance quite a lot as well and I've settled on this. I've settled on target man so with balance with target man, non interceptions and stay forward. Uh, if you've got a player like Neymar, Mbappe, Ben Yedder, you know, players who are fast, agile, sharp, you know, really, really good in the box. It works really well in target, man. I find it keeps them in the middle, in that box, exactly where you want them to be. And obviously, you've got to stay forward on as well. So, you're not, they're not, not going to come back and defend. They're, going to be, they're always going to be up there, putting the pressure on. It always gives you an outlet as well. And having the target, man, for attacking runs, for me, is I found just work best. And having them in the right place at the right time 
and giving you the options in the box to to pass there straight away. And if you can either turn and shoot or you know use that, that player to bring in other players into the play. So pretty basic there, but um, a lot of people I know don't use target man, but give it a go, see what you think. I, I do like it. Um, it, it as I just felt that Neymar has been performing the best with this setup that I've got here for him. So the cam, I have come back on defense, balance crossing runs, tip to position and no interceptions. Um, I have come back on defense here just to turn that midfield there with the CDMs into kind of almost like a Three, three CDMs, three defensive midfielders when the opponent's attacking just to give it a bit of extra support and it gives you that versatility depending on what formation you're playing at against you know you know it gives you that backup you've got your four defenders and then your three kind of midfielders all defending and, and helping out we'll go on to the lamb and the ram these are exactly the same I do nothing here basic defence but balance crossing runs stick to position and no interceptions um, Again, with this, I manually control what I want them to do. I use, you know, the left button and right button to tell them to make runs when I want them to. And obviously, you can do one twos as well, which will make them make runs as well. I find it just works best for these two. You know, it, 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 these are two players that have got plenty of speed, plenty of standing there. They'll get up and down. You, and, and if you control them in game and, and, and make sure you tell them what to do you will make use of them and they, they are always there you know they will defend and they will get forward independently as well with, without you telling them what to do right on to the CDMs again these two both have exactly the same instructions cut passing lanes stay while, att while attacking non interceptions and cover centre I've played around again with these two I've had Zizoko as you see it and then I've had the box to box CDM which has been Kevin Brown in the past and is now on I've had that unbalanced or stay back while attacking but I've just found that stay back while attacking on these two just works the best especially with having Neymar on stay forward De Bruyne on come back on defence getting up and down um, I find it allows you to use these three to build up the player really nicely and then with the added width that we have on, on the attacking formation, you can then play out to Triore or Silver as well, or wherever you've got in those positions and, and break really well and spread the play. The fullbacks, very standard. Stay battle attacking on Lala and Tellez. And again, I've said this previously in the other tactics, and that's not changed. I manually change in game pretty much. At the beginning of most games, I'll put attacking fullbacks with the D-pad instruction straight away. So you obviously want fast fullbacks in them positions with a lot of stamina. Um, and, and I will attack with my fullbacks. And I like the ability to tell them when to attack and then the ability to turn them off and then for them to stay back. So for me, having that rather than balance, because I know some people have started using balance, but I find using the D-pad instruction, fullbacks attacking, stroke get forward. You can control it. You can control whether you want your fullbacks to attack or not. So why, why start them unbalanced when you can start them on stay back? And if you want to attack, you can just literally run the D-pad. Um, I'll show it in game anyway, and tell them to get forward. So you've got the best of both worlds there, and I, and that's that's why I stick with that. Centre backs, no instructions. Stay back attacking and no interceptions. And the goalkeeper, I have them come for crosses and balanced. So that's the setup. That's how we play in game, and I. It took a while to bring this out because I have tweaked this and tweaked it and tweaked it. And I think it's like a month to maybe even two months since I did the last video now. Just because I wanted to get it just right. I wanted to make sure that I am happy with it. This is probably what I'm going to take into the EPREM um, as well next week because it's working so, so well for me. Um, but the big, big thing is using this in combination with in-game instructions as well, which I will show. What I'll do is, well, in a minute, we'll go into the club I will talk about the players' strengths and weaknesses in these positions and what kind of players you want in the positions to make the most of this tactic. And then I'll show you some in-game footage of what I do, how I use the tactic and what I do with the instructions on the D-pad as well. Okay, so here we are now. I've just changed it for to 4 2 3, one just to show you, obviously, the setup that you've seen and, and the players in the right positions. So ignore the chemistry. This is just what I changed to in-game. But I wanted to show you here just so it gives you a better look at, at what I do. So defensively... You know, if you've got David Luiz, you're laughing because he's literally the best defender I've used in this game, hands down. Um, unbelievable. Um, probably end game now till team of the season. 
such a such a good defender in all aspects, in defending, passing the ball, his position, his mobility, absolutely fantastic. Pairing with a defender like Blank, or you know, even I use Diego Carlos for quite a long time as well. He does a job there. You know, I feel like we centre backs. As long as you've got two strong centre backs with decent speed, like I've got 83 speed and I've got a shadow on David Luiz, and even Blanks 79 pace, but with a shadow on it bumps it right up. Um, I won't jump into the can and show all that just because it'll let the video last too long. But you, you can see basically what kind of players I'm using in these positions and mirror it, or, or you know, put in for example Carlos and someone like Luis or Militao, for example, is, is another strong one with like Rio. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do as a centre backs, but I think a lot of you know the best players to use as centre backs at the moment. This is a very OP pairing, though. Luckily, I've got Team of the Year Allison in net, so you, you can't go wrong there at all. But I did the Van der Sar icon swaps, another really good goalkeeper, or you can have to Stegen as well. Um, but you know, if goalkeepers are very much preference. Make sure you find a goalkeeper that works for you, who you like best, and stick with them. Otherwise, you'll find it pretty frustrating when you've got a goalkeeper you're not getting along with. For your full backs, it's really important. In this formation, as I said to you in the tactics, I like to put my full backs on attacking, you know, get forward with the deep hand instructions. I like them to get up and down, up and down, and get involved in all aspects of play, high up the pitch, and need the speed and, and stamina to get back. So currently I'm using Tellers. Again, 88 pace with a shadow on him, ups it way over 90, 90 I think even 95, 98 over acceleration and um, sprint speed. And again, Defending is very, very good. He's also very good on the ball, good at dribbling, good at passing. You need that. He's going to be getting in attacking positions and also he's got to be able to get back and be good at defending. And Headliner Tellers is fantastic for that. He's one of the best left backs I've used. First time I've used him, I used his informant in the draft once and really, really liked him, but it's the first time I've used him since that moment. And then I've got Lala on the right, obviously 89 pace with an anchor on him this time just because he doesn't need such a big speed boost, in my opinion, with the shadow. And another player again, he's got 92 passing, 87 dribbling, 85 defending, 85 physical. He, he, he can play as a winger almost as well. And he, again, he's up and down. You can involve him while you play. So I would say your fullbacks are key, key players in this 4 2 3 1 and the way I play the game and involve them in the play. CDMs, as long as you've got a player like Sizoko, um, a proper CDM who's just going to win the ball for you, you know, Sizoko, Kante. Um, Paulinho, you know, Edna Golan, you know, that, that kind of player, someone who's a proper, proper CDM, it's got the physical physical side of the game, they've got the speed, they've got the, the power and the defending skills and positioning and awareness to win the ball back. You can then pair him with a box to box CDM who doesn't need to be as strong on his defending physical, like Awa, for example, um, Kevin De Bruyne. Again, Screen for me, you know, he's still very strong defensively, but he's a box to box. Uh, De Jong, Team of the Year, De Jong, you know, that kind of person. You want a ball playing CDM with your full and out and out of CDM just to give you that balance in that area of the pack. And again, I, I, I'm very. I like to play out from the back with my players and involve other players in the play. So having that balance works really, really well. And then for my camp, I've got Kevin De Bruyne at the moment. Uh, team of the year card, very, very, very strong. He's a fantastic passer, really good at shooting. Uh, would I choose him out of choice as a, as a camp? No, I wouldn't. I would have him as my box box CDM. Um, ideally, I'd have someone like Mbappe, um, even this Neymar with Mbappe up front in the perfect world, or you say we up front with Neymar behind, behind him. Um, in this position, you want somebody who's got great passing, great shooting, great dribbling, really high agility. Uh, you know, it's got five star skills, ideally, to be more creative. Uh, that, that's what you want in that position. Obviously, I've got Kevin De Bruyne because he's untradeable and I want to make use of, of him the best I can until I can get a better player on the road to glory. Um, but he'll be going straight to CDM once I get the player that I would really like to have in that position, like I just explained to you there for an example. Then I've got Bernardo Silva at Ram, very, very strong player, very, very similar to Gold Card Messi. A lot of people actually think he's a lot better than Gold Card Messi. Great shooting, great finesse shots, can cut inside of his left foot, good passing, good speed. Can get up and down that wing, works really well with Lala supporting him. 
and then Adama needs no introduction, you know, he's fast as hell, and if you, a lot of people struggle, I think, with this card, but if you learn how to use this card, he's unbelievable, in the weekend league especially, in Division 1, he struggles a little bit, um, just because you are playing against a much higher level of opponent, who, who kind of know how to defend against him, but in a weekend league, it's really effective, he can get you some rage quits, and, and cause serious problems early on, especially in like the first 14, to 16, 17 games, and especially with that pace and power, shooting's 80, uh, although I feel like if you power shot it and drive it he'll score nine times out of ten if he's in the box especially great dribbling and great strength using that left trigger to shield it works really well for him as well and again another really, really fast player that can link well with the left back and he's really good at up and down the field but again for example you could have Neymar in that position you could have Promise in that position in former ones to watch and the same here Mbappe Messi Dembele um, all kinds of players in that position and then Neymar's just just the OP player, you know. This headline of Neymar is crazy, crazy good, and I I, always, I almost feel like you need your best player in the box. You need a five star weak foot and five star skiller, ideally in the best situation, like Neymar. You know, he's just unbelievable. If he's played two hundred and two games for me, he's scored one hundred and ninety eight and assisted sixty four. He's incredible. I had Eusebio for one of the weekends, and the eighty nine Eusebio is incredible as well. But hands down, this name is better than him. He outperforming him, we sniped him for three point six million, which is a result. But you know, Mbappe, Neymar, probably team of the player of the month. Yet Ben Yedder probably do a job there as well. You know, you, you put your best player in that position. Trust me, and you will you will get better results. Obviously, you can see there from his stats, all the play goes through him. He's, he's the talisman for this team. Fantastic, but that's a quick overview. Well, not a quick overview, quite quite an in depth overview of my team and how I rate it and how I use the players and, and why. Um, hopefully that helps you in deciding kind of who who to pick and who to choose, and maybe give you some inspiration as well for your teams. If you've got any questions down below, you know, if there's anybody you, you think about using, you want some opinions on him, or my thoughts on him, come in the stream, or just pop a question down below and I'll, I'll get back to you as well. What I'll do now, we'll jump into some footage, in-game footage, I'll show you some clips of my tactics with the D-pad, talk about what to do and what not to do with overload ball, some of my ways of getting around overload ball, how I defend, how I attack. And just some different examples of how I use a formation, just so you can see how I play with it and how I have become a consistent Elite 3, Elite 2, Division 1 player and play against, obviously, verified players regularly, play against some pro players and things like that, um, and competing really, really well. And hopefully it works well for you guys. Right, so let's get into the gameplay. Here we go. So straight away, overload ball side on. You want to switch that on straight away pretty much every single game and then gauge it in-game whether you need to change it or not, depending on your opponent's playing and whether they try to exploit you having a narrower setup. Uh, what overload ball does is compress your team in and, and, and bring all your players a little bit tighter, a little bit closer together and ball side to where the opponent is. And obviously it packs out in the midfield and the fence a little bit more, allowing you to try and you know block the crosses, intercepts, and just makes your team overall a lot more compact, a lot less wide as well. So one thing I've noticed here, I've looked at the minimap, and I can see if you look there, these four defenders are very, very narrow. So what I've what I've done is I've hit open the D-pad and I've put hook sidelines and attacking fullbacks. And as you can see there, my fullbacks are literally on this on on the you know the, the sideline there, right up, allowing me to try and find the gaps in the middle and exploit the fact that he has got a narrow play. And doing that will force his players to become less narrow and spread out as well, allowing you to find the gaps in the middle. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy's playing drop back as well. You can see his defenders going straight in position and going quite deep as well. But you can see my full box bombing it up. If you look at the minimap as well, make sure you keep looking at the minimap regularly as you can see how, how I've got so many players forward here and how wide it is and how spread out his players are becoming. And that has allowed me then to find that gap for Neymar there. Be very patient in your play and pick out the player when the opportunity arises rather than forcing it and, and getting tackled or losing the ball. Again here, just showing you like Bernardo there, he's unbalanced. You know, we had no instructions on him, but look how, how he's defending there. We've trapped with him, he's got back, he's won the ball, and we're on the break. And you can see Lala there going up. But in that case, we didn't need him. We've got a wah, CDM here as well. We just told him to make a run, played it through to him. And then Lala's obviously supporting, coming up, you know, adding to the play and having all the extra players forward. And one thing I want to show you here is as well, look, you can see I'm playing drop back, as you've seen in the instructions, but... I mean, looking at the play, you can see it's not like typical 
every man behind the ball because it's only four depth and the way I'm playing I'm being aggressive switching to the player nearest to the ball and putting pressure on him running the ball back early um, way before it really has opportunity to drop everybody back into position De Bruyne there with a superb pass for Adama that hug sideline there you know that, that's what's really effective um, I, I think this opponent is playing overload ball side and maybe even forward as well and it's allowing me to make use of that of that with their again Lala there spreading the play play it out and then play it back into the middle be patient you know again just just keep hold of the ball wait for that opportunity keep playing it side to side spread the play let him pull his players out of position and having that hug sideline attacking full backs will create the width and the space and eventually that opportunity will come against players that are playing with, with so many players you know, back defending, and this is Division One rivals as well, guys. This, bear in mind, this is it's not an easy match. It's a Division One player, and it took a bit of trickier there from Neymar to to get the goal. But using them tactics of being being clever and aware of how your opponent's playing is what makes the biggest difference between you getting maybe Gold One, Elite Three, Elite Two, going up into Division Three, Two, Four. You know, whatever your goal may be these little things will help you and having the patience as well in your play and, and looking what's going on in the minimap and reacting to it is, is really key and it's something I do a lot of now just showing you here again you know patient defending pressing you see I'm switching quick I'm, I'm, I'm trying to predict what my opponent's doing and read what he's doing so I can switch and take advantage of that and intercept it and De Bruyne are there that, that's attacking fullbacks that's Tellers there making the run Adama's come into the middle for a teller to set him up and pass it in and it's a goal straight away and that was that game over I've jumped into some foot champs here as well to show you a bit of foot champs gameplay this is just the same tactic 4-2-3-1 overload ball side I've not got um, hook side line and I don't think I've got attacking fullbacks here either no I've not no you can see on the minimap there straight away I've not so I'm just going to pass it around be patient here you can see a different style of gameplay you know using the width there from my uh, attacking players with Silver there, great ball from Lala, patient again, wait for Adama to come in, and there, bang, goal Adama, fantastic, and then he's out of here. On to the next match, Roberto Carlos in, on this occasion, down the wing, through to, through to Lala, again, we'll just wait, 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 wait for the players to come in, that's Bernardo Silva coming from Ram, coming into the play, having him on balance there, allows him to do that, and, and the, the width that we've got on as well is, is, is quite balanced and players will come inside as well as go out wide and again here fighting for the ball being aggressive in the defending not giving your opponent an opportunity to settle and this is where I said to you that even though I use drop back you can see that it doesn't really look like drop back it's not your typical sat, sit and wait and then get the ball it's about being aggressive but using that drop back element to allow you to play that way and be aggressive because the players are in position faster and then you can concentrate on defending and pressing the opponent and again very similar to a goal you saw earlier there Neymar waiting for the space passing it into him a little, little cheeky ball roll fake shot and a goal again here pressing high up with Sissoko getting the ball on the break patience and again nearly a goal there from Bernardo Silva on that occasion great great save from his goalkeeper short corner here another thing you want to do use that a lot use a short corner a lot and be patient again again we keep all the ball here away bit of less stick dribbling he's won the ball on that occasion but you know pressing keeping the ball staying up being patient keep the ball just wait take your time great thing about this formation is because it's so balanced the players are going to be in position and again you can see there that little fake shot from Neymar is so OP on this on this game especially with, with Neymar and you've got him in that position again pressing the play high up attacking him winning the ball high up there again nearly creates a close opportunity and there look you can see I'm changing I'm switching getting to the play close to it again switching putting the pressure on him not letting him settle you know again De Bruyne high up high up pressing aggressive defending and we're off, you know, Bernardo Silva's off down the wing, off for another attack again. Again, patience, wait for players to make the run, you've got a while there coming from CDM, you know, attacking, that's the CDM's again, you've seen that's the second time you've seen a while coming into the play, setting up De Bruyne for a goal. Gerard there, again, high up, a while, winning the ball, 
not using that typical drop back mentality, using the drop back tactic, but not the drop back mentality. Mentality. That's the key thing here. An absolutely delightful goal from Neymar there. Seen his keeper come out slightly. I'm not sure whether he moved him out or not, but I've seen him come out and literally curled it around there. Absolutely beautiful goal. This occasion we've got Mendy. We've put Mendy in for three games to the Lala. Great on the ball. But being patient again, Bernardo Silva here, play it into the gaps, Awa, oh, you know, attacking again. And again, it's just showing you how high the CDMs are, lots of his local there, getting him to play. De Bruyne in there, beautiful little. So there we go, guys. That was the gameplay footage. I didn't want to stop and start it like I have done in the past. I wanted to just let it flow, talk over it, give you a little insight into my, my thought process, the things I were doing in game, um, while leaving it free flowing and let you kind of see a, a bit of everything, a bit of my defensive style how I tackle, how I defend, my attacking techniques, how I um, open up my opponents from the goals I was scoring, as well as obviously the key things as well, which I want to go over here. So one of the first things I do every time I start the game is because it's so OP, is straight away hit down an overload ball on the D-pad. Use that straight away. 99% of the time, you it's something that you'll leave on all game unless you come up against a very high level opponent um, you will find this a lot in division one and generally maybe 23 22 games on wins onwards in weekend league you may have to turn it off if your opponent is wise to it and switches to a wider tactic formation or hug sidelines for example and exploits the fact that your players a bit narrower but always turn it on straight away because you can just turn it off if your opponent is is, is, is reacting to that but you know for a lot of players you, it's something you'll put on and it will help you massively help you defending help you win the ball back a lot lot easier secondly you saw me early on within games and i do this a lot now i kind of just do it second nature but it took me quite a while to get used to doing this is i look at the mini map at the bottom and i will see what they're using what formation they're using and react my player to it like in the first um, few clips you saw that i could spot it that i think he'll play another little ball side he was playing quite a narrow um defensive style on his tactics so straight away i put hug sideline and attacking fullbacks to really exploit that space on the wings and spread out his defenders to allow me to create the openings in the middle for de bruyne and, and neymar to you know to, to have the space to maneuver and that one is a match doing that as well and um, that's something that is quite advanced and it's something that you probably want to trial a little bit in rivals and really take the time to have a look at your opponent's style of play in the first kind of 20 minutes 15 20 minutes and then decide whether it's something you want to do because it is quite risky it's high risk high reward because if they do count you obviously your fullbacks are out of position um if you are aggressive with defending like myself and you can see from some of the clips it's pretty easy to manage if you careful with it and aggressive and win the ball back higher on the pitch but just just be careful just something to think about and to trial and see how you get on with it but it is lethal um, against opponents who are playing narrow and overload ball side and then the other clips really were just showing you my my style of defending um I, I, something i want to show you like i said to you in the um in the detail and the formation that even though it's dropped back it doesn't really feel like it in game and it doesn't really look like it in game on very few occasions does it look like drop back as you saw it then um, be aggressive with defending press high up just use the drop back technique to reinforce the players positions to allow you to freely select the player you want to use to press the play at the right time to take your mind off worrying about I'm a player in position I can I can I play high risk defensive maneuvers like I use and pressure and win the ball back quickly and it, and, and doing that and practicing with that and getting better than that will allow you, you to do that and it works really well as you could see um, and then attacking wise again use all the techniques and, and abilities that your players have got be patient with your play don't rush your play use left hip dribbling use L button strafe dribbling use your fake shots use your ball rolls use your drag backs use everything you can if you know skill moves as well like like you could see there that little um, ball roll and flicking it with Neymar was really great to create an opening and a score you know make sure you, you use all these tools to mix your play up the element of surprise of your opponent keep them guessing and you will make you a miles better player and allow you to create openings especially against all the drop backs like low depth and the AI defending opponents that you will come up against is it, it, a lot a lot harder at the moment with overload ball as well being such common knowledge now across all divisions and all levels of play and all the youtube videos saying about using it but just enjoy it enjoy it enjoy the process enjoy getting better don't get annoyed don't get frustrated Came, stay calm 
and I guarantee you will improve at the game. And hopefully these tactics work for you. Let me know if you, if you like the video. Let me know if the tactics work for you. Get them weekend league results in below as well. You know, it's been fantastic hearing how the other formations I've put up have helped a lot, a lot of people. The last video we did got 5,000, well, over 5,000 views um, and over 100 comments. So hopefully like, we can smash like 7,000, 8,000 views on this video and maybe 200 comments. But yeah, make sure you comment, like and subscribe as well. And come and check me out on Twitch TV, guys. Thanks for watching and good luck in the weekend league. And hopefully you smash it, guys. Take care, everyone.